right, so I guess you just want to kind of introduce yourself, like name, where you're from, all that type of stuff. What's up? My name is Marty Party. Um, I'm a music producer. I live in Brooklyn, New York. I'm down here in uh, Miami doing a gig here in South Beach. It's my second time in Miami. I was here about a year ago. Um, here at the Fulmore. It's a pretty big intimidating room. <laughs> but uh, we'll have some fun. Nice man. And I'm doing an interview for Dubstep 101. Yes, awesome. Uh, so I guess first of all just tell us how you got started in you know electronic music and Dubstep um, in specific. I've only been doing this for, this is my fifth year. Um, I used to be a software engineer, which most producers used to be. Um, we're all kind of nerdy computer people. And I just picked up uh, Ableton Live like five, six years ago and started figuring it out. And I've always liked music, I've always followed music. So I started making some tunes and it worked out really well. I just went from there and got to the point where I could quit my job. And I've been touring pretty much full time for the last two and a half years now. Nice, and where, where are you kind of based? Where are you kind of making your music? I was now? based on the West Coast, but I moved to New York um, two and a half years ago. So I have a studio in Brooklyn. Nice. So I make all my music in Brooklyn, New York. Nice, man. Well, and what's, what's that setup look like there in your studio? Pretty basic. Um, it's just a small room on the side of my house, and um, you know, I just have some good studio monitors, a big desk, a big iMac, you know, a big screen iMac big MIDI controller and it's just tons of software. Yeah. Everything I do is software. I'm a complete fanatic at software. I don't like analog sound at all. I like everything to be synthesized as much as possible. Nice. Anything in particular, like software-wise that you really um, dig? Right. These days, you know, I have collected so much software, but you know how it is. You, you have like gigabytes of shit on your computer, but you really only use a few things. Yeah. You know, um, I've really started using massive uh, vengeance for my drum one shots, all the vengeance samples. Um, I use Omnisphere now for my pads, or Contact, or Logic for pads, and that's pretty much it. I just make sounds from all those tools and just nice. make a lot of sounds. It's just all about making sounds and. Yeah. Coming up with new arrangements and new quantizations and new patterns that yeah. have never been heard before, you know? Yeah, Layering sure. them together and trying to make original tunes. Yeah. So what, I guess, what do you use live that's maybe a little different than your style? Um, I use Ableton Live to produce my music as my environment and then I also use it for my live performance in the other view. So I use it for both the two views in the tool. Um, and each, in my set, I basically just have all of my tracks in a couple of columns, full tracks. Um, I like to play only in my own music in my sets as much as possible. Um, I will play Friends music or, you know, if there's a really amazing song I love, I'll play it, but try not to. So mostly my own songs in all the columns. There's like 50 to 80 of them at any one time. And then I have a couple of columns of acapellas, just vocal, hip-hop acapellas and other things. And then a couple of columns of just one shots and effects, and then on my control I use a chaos pad, just a regular okay, um, uh, trigger finger. Um, I can control four decks, nice. and so I use two de decks for tracks, mixing one to the other, and then one deck for acapellas and one deck for one shots, and then just mix it all live in, nice. in a live environment. Nice, that's that's awesome. So, uh, yeah. do you use any other? Uh, how do you like the the trigger fingers? Is that, is that more I've tried a lot of controllers. You know, a lot of people go for the latest and greatest ones and try and get as many features and buttons. But you know, I'm on the road all the time and I'm a pretty crazy guy and I spill beer and <laughs> I sweat like hell. And the, the trigger finger is seriously the only one that lasts. Yeah, because it's just it's so solid. Yeah, it, it's, it's simple and basic, and it does what it's supposed to do. It's amazing. It's All like, the other ones break either in the show or in transit. Yeah, they just fall apart. Yeah, it's, it seems like a ton of people are using it. It's amazing because it seems like it's the cheapest little controller. And it's on. discontinued. Yeah, I know. It's impossible to find them now. So I, I was lucky. I've got two, and a third one is my backup. And the backup one, a fan just get brought to a show. It was like, hey, I don't use this, I thought you might like it. <laughs> nice. And like, I was recently in Canada, in Vancouver, and my trigger finger broke, and so I'd find one, I went to a store, a couple stores, me and the promoter drove around all of Vancouver, couldn't find one. Yeah. They're like, out, they're gone. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what I'm gonna do, I was actually having a 
nervous breakdown on the plane <laughs> a few weeks ago thinking what am I gonna do when they all break yeah I'm gonna have to like pick eBay. up another controller you know <laughs> yeah seriously yeah yeah it's amazing I mean it's the cheapest little you know easy thing I just need 16 pads yeah four sliders and a couple knobs you know yeah it works that's pretty much all I need yeah well cool uh, you got any new releases or anything like yeah, that yeah I've got tons of new music um, the release process isn't as fast as it used to be because I'm using a proper public system, you know, a much bigger operation. So, um, you know, they need more time to promote because, you know, I'm trying to blow up. Um, so you've got to do all these things. It's just, it's a lot more work and a lot more people involved. So there's a release schedule. My next release coming out is called Sub On. It's a series of releases I'm going to be doing that are just pure dubstep, um, but my own take on dubstep again. So it's Marty Party, dubstep for kids, it's just fun, nice. jump around, have fun, the themes are all real juvenile and crazy. Nice. And so I'll play a lot of those tracks tonight. Then I have my next EP after that is much more purple again and um, what I like to call a new progressive hip hop. It's just basically hip hop starting very basically and building, progressing just like house music to a crescendo, you know, my purple flavor. So yes. another purple album will come out, EP. And then I've just got tons of remixes and singles that I've just been putting out there, like the Lil Wayne one, the Beanie Man one, uh, my, Clint Ma my Clint Mansell one I'm putting out. I did a Beats and Teak remix. I did a Jesse and the Hot Boys remix. I did an Infected Mushroom remix. Nice. So I'm putting all those out. Nice. Where, where do you find some of the, I guess, inspiration for some of the tracks? Just like radio, internet? Well, not like really. That? When I'm at home in the studio um, during the weeks, you know, I pretty much make a song every day. That's kind of like my goal, my style. And the, it usually starts really with either a melody, you know, just sitting at the, at the keyboard and playing, finding a new tone or a new sound in, one of, in a synthesizer with the various oscillations and experimenting and playing a melody and finding something I like and then deciding you know what kind of BPM it will fit with it and, and then experimenting and trying to find a new either a really crazy new beat or trying to simplify an existing beat to the point where it's only the basics yeah and you know keeping you know as much sound available for the instrumentation as possible that's what I like I like it that if you can remove the beat it's still interesting yeah so I try and minimize the beat and once I've got a melody and a beat you know then I can work backwards find the chords find the scale lay down some pads get some intros going and then obviously work on the bass line and that's just all about making a bass patch you know either starting from one you've made already or just smoking a fucking joint and making some new sounds and trying to find the next sound you know something that fits the, t the melody and the tone of what you're trying to say yeah you know a voice and then sing something sing a bass line and then go back and work it all together add some layers some arpeggiations and bring it up to crescendo add some fulls some rises and you know that's it make a track and how, how do you kind of learn how to do all this do you go to music school no just... man i don't know i just guess i'm just lucky it just came to me, you know, I was lucky enough to hang out in the beginning with Ua and Edit and Justin Beretta and Mimosa, you know, we all started kind of at the same time and we learned the tools and I don't know, I just picked up my own bits here and there. Of, uh, really, it's about arrangement. What arrangements do you like? Like, you know, everyone can make a beat that yeah. loops around. It's about making a song. And that's about an introduction, development, a beat, a bass line, a crescendo, an outro. You know, it's about a story. Yeah. And I've, I've really worked on my own formula for doing that. And, and I call it purple, you can call it whatever you want. It's a combination of hip hop and dubstep. It's, it's the intention of hip hop with bass lines from dubstep. Yeah. That's just the stories that I tell them, you know, they, the inspiration comes from anything. I made the ice cream truck because the fucking ice cream truck keeps coming by my house in Brooklyn every day. And I heard the melody every day. And so in my dream, I woke up in the morning, I was like, fuck it, I know exactly the baseline for the ice cream truck thing and I made it. And it's now every time anyone hears the ice cream truck in my group of friends, they're all like, it's just, you know, everything inspires us. Yeah. It's music, it's all just about melodies and tunes and yeah. things you can whistle. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, man. I'm really excited to see where it's going to go over the next few years because I think dubstep is going to have to evolve. 
Yeah, I agree. And I think um, everyone's heard all the sounds now, the intensity. Now we have to try and massage that into a place that it can become mainstream. Yeah. Or it will just go drum and bass and you know become a fringe subculture for yeah. you know. But you know, I enjoy working with vocalists and I enjoy working with rappers and I enjoy working with, with pop stars and, and, and their music and we're all trying to get there, you know? We're yeah. trying to bring baseline music into the mainstream. Yeah. So I'm hoping that somebody will hear my some music and hit me up and be like I want you to make me a song. Nice. <laughs> well, cool, man. I think that's a, yeah. a good place to, to end on. So. Thanks a lot, man. And good luck with your blog. Uh, I'm really impressed. I'm all about starting new things. And, you know, I'll put all my energy behind it and do whatever I can for you. And Thanks, man. Maybe you'll be the next big blog. For sure. We'll see. Yeah. Thanks. Enjoy the show. No problem.